Hi and welcome back to Main Stage. It is Loopback Plugin time. Let's get started on this and talk about it. The Loopback Plugin will be inserted in one of your inserts here. And if you have an empty slot, you can just grab it, go to Delay, Loopback, and Bambo opens up. If you've seen the playback video or played around with playback, you'll notice quite a similarity in the interface. And it's also a screen pig, so let's get rid of it right now. I'm also going to do a Command Z because I don't want two loopbacks in this particular channel strip. Now, Loopback in a single channel strip captures the audio of that channel strip. If you're in a patch that just has one channel strip, like this is Rhodes, it will just capture this and that's fine. That's all we need. However, if you happen to have Rhodes, acoustic piano, strings, blah, 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 bass maybe, this isn't going to work for you. So if you want to capture the audio of multiple channel strips, let's take a look at this. We have a guitar audio channel strip coming in and it's via its sends is routed out these two channel strips right here and they are unique amps so there's different sounds on each one so this would be a good reason to capture these separately or combine them rather and let's go into uh, show signal flow and because these are both routed out via their send to bus 3 I have an aux channel strip that was created when I did that assignment its input is bus 3 I have a loopback plug in here and this is the way you want to capture multiple channel strips. You're going to route them through their sends to a common bus, have an aux channel strip that collects the audio of that bus, and instantiate a loopback plug-in here. So you could do, you know, two, six, eight, whatever channel strips is all good. In theory, and I don't recommend this, you could also put it on your output here as well, but there's going to be some issues with that that's not going to work 100% as effectively as what it does in here. So the best way to do it, sends. Aux channel strip, loop back. Multiple channel strips going to that. So if you have a complex patch of multiple channel strips, this is your ticket right here. Now let's go, uh, oh, let's go back here and check out our dear little lonely loop back plug in here. And uh, by the way, I got the reveal button closed. Let's open that. And that's a little tip. Open and close that with the reveal button. Again, looks a lot like the playback plugin. All the header information is pretty much redundant. So I'm just going to quickly go over the header information because it's all in the playback video as well. You can close this window completely like this. You can, by clicking on this X, you can, if you're in link mode, I can go from channel strip to channel strip. It will open up a new plugin in this window. Allow me to just use one window to view multiple plugins, if you will, albeit one at a time. Your view can change from the GUI to the text view. You can show your channel strip again. This is at the patch level. I only have one channel strip at this patch. That's why I only have one channel strip here. If I've added a level that had multiple channel strips, I can navigate from channel strip to channel strip. And if a channel strip has more than one insert, you can navigate to these different inserts as well, these plugins. So we'll keep it right here. Bypass it takes it out of the loop, so to speak. No pun intended on loop back. If you've edited, you'll get the compare light up and you can click on that to reset it. Uh, back a step, if you will, or back to the original setting, actually. Uh, your next and previous settings, speaking of settings, and you can navigate this way with your pop-up menu, all this typical stuff. You can actually save settings, delete settings, reset your settings, bring in a setting. Settings is really going to save this stuff down here. That's about all it's going to do. So I've brought in a setting that I'd saved. I can reset it to the initialized default setting. We have copy and paste as well. Let's go ahead and close this back out. And let's talk about action menu here. It's got some unique features to this. You can import and export your tape loops, or if you've recorded one, you don't like it, you can clear it. Let's go ahead and import a tape loop. And I've saved one here. I've created a folder already, brought one in. And let's say we love it. And let's say it was our original. We just recorded it. We want to export it. We can now save it and you can navigate to wherever you'd like to, to save that. We're going to hit cancel. Uh, let's say that we really don't like what we just did. We can clear the tape loop. Yeah, but let's bring it back in for demonstration purposes. So let's go to import and uh, thank goodness for these recent places. Bring that puppy back in. Now let's take a look at a couple of these other ones. We have monitor. This is for when you're playing the loop back. Do you want to hear yourself? Do you not want to hear yourself? Or only do you want to hear yourself during recording? So these next two items, when patch or set is selected and on main stage clock start, have the same menus. Do nothing, clear, start playing, start recording or clear and start recording. Those are all self-evident. Clear means get rid of the audio file that's in there. Same thing right here. So what is the main stage clock? We'll talk about in just a second here. This is set concert tempo after first take, which I'll talk about in an ensuing video here. 
Back to main stage clock start. Well, main stage clock start is, if you haven't done anything, it's automatically assigned to your play stop. And I've put in a little button up here that, uh, let me make sure this isn't going to play while I'm talking. So right now on main stage clock start, good, I want it to do nothing. So I'm going to hit my space bar, and you'll actually see this firing up here. And we've got a little count going on there. So I know that's pretty small, but uh, you can check that out. Okay, so that's basically the main stage clock. So the main stage clock can be stopped. It can be reset. We're back at bar one. I'm just toggling the space bar, just hitting it off and on. Now I can have, if I play this right now, this is independent of main stage's clock. Or I can have it do something, for example, when the main stage clock is initiated. I can have it start playing. So I'm going to use a space bar. I may have to hit this twice. So now it's linked to main stages, a clock. And this actually affects your relative position too. When this is in relative position down there, it's affected by main stages clock. So let's do something else. When main stage clock start, let's hit clear. So now I'm going to hit the space bar. I may, again, I may have to hit it twice, but you'll see this audio file disappear. There we got it. Okay. So that's how it works. Nothing too scientific about that. I'm out of here for now. We're going to deal with everything else in the ensuing video. Stick around. Hope you got a tip or two. Thanks for watching.